Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our service this morning. It's good to see you here. And for those who are online, welcome to our service as well. Uh, looking forward to uh, what is in store today. I'm actually not in the band today, so I get to have a breather, which is great. It's great to have Andrew on the guitar um, and the rest of our team. So welcome to our service. Uh, it's lovely to have you here as we continue our journey with past Easter, um, you know, and in some ways we're sort of, we're going to be basking in the afterglow of Easter, and we have been for 2,000 years. So let's just pause and, and commit this time to the Lord, so let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the, this morning, and even though there's been a bit of rain around, we thank you that this community of people have been able to gather here. And Lord, as we gather, Lord, we we just understand your presence. We understand that you promise that when two or three are gathered in your name, you promise to be here. And so we accept your promise. We believe in our heart and we receive this great gift that comes from your heart to ours in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Would you like to stand as our team leads us in a time of worship? Let me see. You need a baby. 
uh, I'm going to pray, but to, I've, we've been standing for a bit, so it'd be good to take a seat. Let's pray. Lord, as we've uh, song, sung songs this morning, identifying just this space to, to worship you, acknowledging that, that you're the one that uh, sets us free, that you're the one that gives us um, an opportunity to be changed and transformed, to be rescued and revived and restored and to be resurrected with Christ. Lord, we're just amazed. Lord, as we, we look back to Easter and we think about the implications, not just for then, but for now. And so, Lord, we give you our praise, we give you our honour, we give you our thanks. But we also recognise, Lord, that there are times like the disciples where we hide away in a closed room with the door locked, not expecting you to come in. And yet you come. And because you come and because you meet us in those places, Lord, places where we hide our secret hurts and our secret sins, Lord, we confess to you our needs. We confess, Lord, that we need you. We confess our, our need to be set free. And so we bring these things to you, God, and ask you to forgive again, to extend grace to extend mercy, to give us peace. And so we receive such a gift in and through the name of Jesus, our Lord, our King, our God. Amen. Well, friends, uh, we're going to have a time to greet each other, but I'd just like to start it off by, by doing it, by using that traditional greeting. So the peace of the Lord be with you. Let's just take a few moments to turn, to get up and to turn to someone and to come and greet them this morning. Could I get you to uh, take a seat? Um, we're just going to switch the order around a little bit. So I've, I've actually asked uh, for Charles to come forward, and he's going to bring us our Bible reading. And we're sort of like setting the scene, and I'll be talking to the kids in a minute that will flow out of that Bible reading. But I just want to uh, just get Charles to set the scene, you know, in this post-Easter moment. And... Uh, uh, that's where we're going to be starting off. So, Charles, would you like to come and bring us to the reading? Thank you. Our reading this morning is from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. Jesus appears to his disciples. 
On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. And then Jesus appears to Thomas. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But they are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life to the full. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you. Okay, well, I want to have a, uh, a chat with the kids. We've got uh, some of our regulars back uh, who were probably away last week. Okay, so, kids, would you like to come over here? Um, I just... Uh, uh, we'll, we'll have a bit of a chat over this side. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. So you can, you can sit here, there, wherever. But, um, all right. Uh, now, I have an envelope here. I have an envelope. What do you think is in it? A card. A card. Uh, it's a bit of a floppy card. Money. Money. Ooh. There's a few things. Oh, yeah, there could be some money in there. So there's something in here, right? So I'm going to open it up and see what's in there. Now, we'll have to see, like, if I told you something that was in here, like if I said there's money in here and some paper clips, you wouldn't believe me, really, probably, unless you saw it, okay? Because you couldn't really tell unless you were holding it up to the light trying to see. But I have $5. Now, that is a lot of money for me because I don't often have foldy plastic money at all at my house. And if, it, if, it, if, if we do have it at my house, Sandra only gives me a bit of pocket money and, and then I don't get it. So I, I don't, I, I, if it gets spent, then I don't get to use it. You can just ask the guys at the Men's Society. They're always asking me for cash and I never have cash. Okay, but I've got some. I've got five dollars. Now this is a pretty special five dollars. I reckon this five dollars is going to help me do a bit of a trick. But to continue this trick, I'm going to need. What are they? Paper, paper clips. All right. So I've got two paper clips. Now I can. I hope I can get this right because I've practiced. But then occasionally when I practice, it doesn't go. Right, so we're going to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see. 
this, I'm going to put this for money. I'm going to fold it up, right? And when I, when I fold this money up, let's see, get this right in there like this. Uh-huh. Now, I have to fold it in thirds, right? Now, the thing is about this is I'm going to take one paper clip and I'm going to put it on the, the top section in the middle section in here like that, right? See? Right? And then I'm going to take this other one, other one here, and let's just hope this works because it'll be funny if it doesn't. Now, I'm going to put it on the back one here and I want to join the middle section in the back section. So let me see. I've got the front section, one on the front, and then one in the back, and both of them are just joined in the middle. Now, the thing is, what's going to happen is when I open this money up, the two paper clips are going to jump up and join and fall on the ground. Okay? Do, do you believe me? Uh, I don't know. You don't? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't, I actually don't know. I'm so confused. <laughs> actually, I think it might be that I've done it the wrong way. If it doesn't, then... Uh, let me just try the, yeah. the fold was the wrong I way. Let me try. Yeah. Yep, that's better. Let me see. So I'm going to try again. I just thought I'd... I'd I had a feeling that things weren't going to go right, so I thought I'd better, I'd better go back and see whether I could retrace my steps. All right, so I'm going to put it there, one on the side and one on the other side, like this. Gee, it's a bit hard to do when you're not doing it on a table. You know, Australian money is all plasticky, so it's hard to do this. All right, okay, so here we go. Yeah, other countries have, like, paper money. We used to have paper money. Trouble is, it wears out quicker. Right, so here we go. They connected. Ah! So, you can disconnect them. But see, see you, seeing was believing, okay? You didn't think to do it, and neither did I, and did it correctly. <laughs> But once I had, the, had it done correctly, you might want to practice this at home if you actually, if, if you have pl- real money at home, all right? I'm sure it's possible, I just didn't think you could do it. Okay. She said she was sure that it was possible, but she didn't think I could do it. I only did That's right. It's a good thing they're friends of mine. I don't take that too harshly. Okay. So... There you go. So the thing about this, it, you, if I had told you that you could do it, you, would, you, would, you wanted to see it being done, okay? Now that you've seen it being done, you'll probably go home and have a crack at it or go somewhere and want to try to do it yourself, right? Maybe I can trust someone with the $5 over there and you can have a go of it during the service, see whether you can get it to work, right? But you have to start, you have to do it exactly the way I did without the, the, the folding it the wrong way, okay? So make sure when you fold it, it has, the top fold has to go left and the bottom fold goes right. Okay? So the thing about believing is that sometimes we, you know, we, we like to believe things that we see. And if we just hear it, it's like, yeah, yeah, okay, that's, that might be true. But, but before you, for it to really know something, we have to see it. And so the disciples were like that too. We just heard Charles read about a guy named Thomas who had trouble believing. Yeah, you know, and the trouble is with poor old Thomas is for the last 2,000 years we've nicknamed him Doubting Thomas, you know. And if someone is, a, is doubting, they call you, they, you might say, ah, oh, you're a Doubting Thomas, just because he wouldn't believe because he didn't, was, it wasn't in the room to see Jesus' holes in his hands and his holes in his side when he had come back to life. But his friends had all seen, but he hadn't. He said, unless I see it, I won't believe you know, seeing's believing. And the next week, Jesus came and saw him. And he said, Thomas, put your fingers in my side. Put your fingers in my hands. Stop doubting and believe. 
you know, because believing is not always, seeing is not always believing, because he said, you believe because you see, but there'll be people coming after who believe and they won't see, and they'll be blessed. And that's you and I, and that's everyone in this room, because we all, we weren't there in that room, but we believe because of the things we heard. We believe because... We believe because that we know that God is at work in our lives, and that's the result of what Jesus did at Easter time. So, do you want to take that over and have practice? Okay, off you go. So, we're gonna we're just changing the order up a little bit, and uh, we're going to have our our time of communion, and then uh, earlier on in the service. So um, if you're uh, going to assist me, I invite you to come up to the, uh, the, the platform with me. Okay, thank you. If you'd like to, you could. There's room. If there's, if you'd like, you can take a seat. Thank you. At Easter time, last week we had uh, a communion service as part of our Easter service, and uh, this is our normal week to have it. Communion, and some people are thinking, why are we having it two weeks in a row? And other people are going, yes, I like having communion every week. So it's sort of we all have different, different likes uh, and different desires. But it reminds us when Jesus uh, was with his disciples in that upper room, he, t- he reminded them that when they get together to share a meal, when they are communing together, that they should break bread, they should drink from the cup, and they should remember. And so that's uh, what we're going to do today. And so let's come before the Lord in prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is right to give him our thanks and praise. Lord God, we thank you for this message of Easter that continues across the ages, the message of your resurrection, the message that brings life and hope and healing and forgiveness. Lord, a message that transforms our lives as we receive your Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, we ask that as we spend time around your table, that we would be focused upon who you are and what you've done. And we give thanks in, with all of our hearts and, pray, and praise you with the faithful of every time and space as we join with the choirs of angels and the whole creation in that eternal hymn. Let's say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Would you like to join with me now as we say the words of the Lord's Prayer? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took some bread, and when he broke it, he gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body, which has been broken for you. Take, eat, in remembrance of me. And we read in the, 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 
the uh, book of First Corinthians, Paul writes about that meal where he says he took a cup and when he'd given thanks, he said, this cup is the new covenant that is in my blood. Take, drink, remember me. And so we take the bread and we take the cup and we do as our Saviour commands and we receive the gifts of God because Christ is the bread of joy who shares food with sinners and Christ is the cup of life who revives the faint-hearted. So let us receive what we are and let's become what we receive, the body of Christ. Lord, we pray that as we would receive this bread today and this cup, that you would meet us at our place of need. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill our lives through your power. Amen. This bread and this cup are the gifts of God for us, Christ, God's children. So let's come to the table, not because we are strong, but because we are weak. Let's come because we, though we love the Lord a little, we'd like to love him more. Let's come because he loved us and he gave himself for us. And let's come. So you're not in church practice as an open table. Uh, we'll be re, uh, 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 bringing the communion elements to you in your seats. Uh, if you'd like to have a gluten-free option, please put up your hand and we'll come and serve you. But just uh, this is open to everyone and we'd just like to prepare your hearts and to receive this gift of God. Amen.
Let's take, eat, <clears throat> and drink by faith with thanksgiving. Body and blood. Let's pray. God of grace, we ask that you would renew us at your table with this bread of life. May the food that we've had strengthen us in your love and help us to serve you and each other. We ask that in the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you. Just quickly, I'd like to go through a few um, announcements. Um, that, uh, firstly, our offering will be taken up during these announcements time. Uh, so if you've come prepared, uh, we thank you for your generosity to us as we uh, um, continue to do the Lord's work here. So there are different ways you can give, as it says on the screen. If you haven't got cash like me, if you're a person that lives in this cashless place, you can come with a card, tap it over there, give online. There's lots of different things you can do, but we appreciate the way in which you give. Our office, after the school holidays, our office will be opening on Mondays, as well as Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Thursday... Um, Kylie works there doing communication, but on Wednesdays, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the office hours are there at 9 to 1. Uh, so if you need to catch up with someone in the office, you can come in and see us now on Mondays as well. Now, the family pastor position update. The Presbytery met, uh, Presbytery Pastor Relations Committee met last Tuesday night. I've got a phone call on Wednesday morning to say it's all gone through... Sandra's been endorsed to be the family pastor, which is great. Um, so we just have to sort out the payroll stuff, so we'll have to figure out a start date sometime soon. She's not here anyway. She's off visiting family down in New South Wales. So, uh, but that's uh, good news that we're able to um, be able to move sometime soon to actually getting that position started. And we look back, it was like June last year that we started that journey, so it's almost a year <laughs> It's taken us to, to get someone. So Kids Club is not going to be next week. Um, we have a number of people, including team members who run Kids Club, who are going to be away next week. So we pushed it back until the 21st. So the special Kids Club program that, that runs for the whole service with activities and games and crafts and music and special stuff is happening in the chapel, but that'll be on the 21st of April. The families just drop their kids off at the door for the whole service time. Uh, so we look forward to that. So the other thing is that um, there is morning tea afterwards and you're most welcome to stay around and enjoy some fellowship. Now, 
a late request, so I'm going to just let uh, Ian come and share something about the football, the sports club. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Um, just wanting to let the congregation know the home and away season is about to start next weekend. We have 15 teams in the Queensland Christian Soccer Association this year. Senior Men's Division One, Division One, yes, and our female team, Division One, coached by the fabulous Mr. Jones. Well done, Tim. And that is going to be fantastic. We 18-week season, then finals. We also have our junior, junior um, about to start again, so four to six-year-old in the second week of term. They'll go through for the nine weeks, and that's what we call our little saints. So four to six-year-olds running around, chasing a ball, having a whole heap of fun games. Um, it is a sensational to just watch those kids. I had the privilege of coaching that team or co coaching that group of kids this term. I'm not sure who had the most fun. <laughs> so enjoy, have a great week. Thanks, Tim. All right, fantastic. And for those who, uh, who um, might not know, um, we, there's a strong connection with us and the St Paul's uh, Sporting Club that goes back decades. Um, and so we're one of the, the chief um, uh, sponsors. And, uh, of, and so um, we're happy to be supporting that. So if you're able to come along sometime, even just to go down and just cheer them on, you might say, but I'm not, I don't have anyone playing any games. It's still fun to come along. I mean, why not? Um, the, I was there uh, last year watching my son play and um, we were sort of new to being around there and there was a, an older lady sitting on the sideline and she was cheering and after, at halftime we started chatting with her and she said, oh, I've just moved down from uh, wherever it was, Maryborough or something like that and she said, my family are not soccer players but my, my granddaughter is going out with a guy in the, whatever the team it was, you know, the first team or whatever it was. And, um, and she said, so I'm coming along because my, and I've just moved here and I'm coming on because I've got nothing else to do. So I'm coming along. And she said, you know what? I'm enjoying it. And she said, I was a, my family were tennis players and we were, you know, competitive tennis. But she said, I've never, never watched, never played this football game, you know, with this round ball. But she said, it's so much fun, you know, and the, the teamwork and all this sort of stuff. And so she was having this great old time, you know, sort of the, this older grandmother there with her granddaughter sitting on the sideline watching her boyfriend. So it's sort of like, um, and I thought, well, wherever you can find community. And she was actually enjoying having that opportunity to be part of community. And so you just never know the sorts of conversations you have on a sideline of a game or who you might talk to or where they're connected or they might not be connected anywhere and they're just looking for community. And so, uh, so and given that our church's uh, vision statement is about being a church where the people who aren't yet here will find a place to belong, you know? It's about belonging. It's about but finding that space where you feel like, I belong, I'm part of this. You know, and so even people that make a connection with the sporting club can ultimately find their way to Jesus, but we need to be on that path too. So I thanks Ian for that, that reminder. Um, so I just want to uh, move on to, uh, we're just going to pray for the offering and then uh, get on to uh, uh, what a few things that I want to share with you today. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to respond to your great love in the bringing of your gifts and the bringing of our, ourselves, the abilities, our, our activity, our talents. Lord, we pray that you would take these things and use them in a way that reaches out and touches people's lives and draws them into your family. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Well... Easter 2024 is done and dusted, right? You know, you, you know that because they're advertising Mother's Day in the supermarkets, right? So you sort of you've, you've, you've seen as 
we, the first, straight after Easter, you walked in there and there's all the advertising all for Mother's Day now. It's sort of like we've moved beyond, although we just felt that we wanted to leave up because we put so much effort into decorating the place. We thought we'd like to leave it up for an extra week. Is that okay just to linger? You know, because it's like not, we, don't really, we don't really dress the church up very much, but we thought we'll, you know, with some of the things, the symbolism that we put of God's love for us and the resurrection and the, the victory that's come in Jesus and the hope and the, 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 the statement that he is risen and the power of the resurrection, we just want to linger with that. You know, when I, I, years and years ago, my father was a, um, a minister at Catherine Regional Parish of the Uniting Church in the Northern Synod. And back in those days, that was, uh, they, there was a, a, a reasonable-sized church in Catherine. Um, it was before they built the Air Force Base, so the town was much smaller. And there were people there from all over the country who, who were there for various sorts of jobs, and there weren't many churches. There were, originally, there were only three churches. There was the Catholic Church, the Anglican Church, and a Protestant Church that covered everybody else. And, that was the, the, and the sign outside the United Church called it the United Church. Um, just because it was just everybody was just connected. And so there were Baptists, and there were Sallies, and there were Church of Christ, and there was a few Pentecostals and whatever. People that didn't fit into the other spaces all just came to the one place and worship together. And you know what? They had a good time. They had a good time. And it didn't really matter what the denomination was there. They just enjoyed having fellowship together because when you pull away the outside, in reality, we're all Christian. You know, we're Christian. We might have different things that we agree on or disagree on, but, you know, it doesn't really matter because the core, the foundation of our Christianity is the cross, is Jesus dying on the cross, is Jesus' resurrection and the power of that resurrection as we believe we receive the gift that was promised that our lives would be changed and that we are part of that story that goes back not just to the time of Jesus, that goes back to the beginning of our recorded time, our biblical record, God's plan that comes through. And I keep repeating that. Because we're part of that, and it's important to make that connection. And so when I think about Easter, you know, and I think about, well, you know, we're sort of starting to move past Easter. Some of us here have eaten all our Easter eggs, if you had any. Some of them might even have stashed a few away, because you figure, you know, I'll just make that last a bit longer. I'll just stick it in the fridge or do something. You know, the kids who've done their Easter egg, egg hunts have eaten all their Easter eggs and they've had their sugar highs and their lows and they've, they've sort of, they've moved on. But you can still buy the odd hot cross bun. You know, there might still be the odd, the odd bit of, there might Easter egg on special somewhere, you know, sort of as we move past that time. But for us, it's like, well, what do we do when we move past Easter? You know, it's time for us to put away the paper mache tombs and to, to put away the crosses and the coloured material. It's time for us to put these things away. But, you know, we, in many ways, we, we're, we're still in that space where we are, we're lingering in that afterglow. I was mentioning the Northern Territory because my, when I was there working, I was always amazed about how long sunsets seem to go. You know, it's sort of like, you know, that the sun would go down, but the glow would seem to stay on for a long time. You know, and, and there are, you know, maybe it's because there wasn't a lot of mountains to block, you know, whatever it might be. You're not we're here with a great dividing range. We sort of, you're, you're in a bit of a shadow, whatever it might be. But there are, but in those spaces where it's flat or where there is ocean to the west, the sun seems, the set seems to linger, you know, and you're, you're just in that afterglow. And so in this afterglow of Easter, we need to allow ourselves just to linger a little bit more with the story and not just rush on to other things. Earlier in the year, I sort of started a series that, that uh, 
that I was calling the 24 hours, and you know, there's just a lot of R words. I mean, even today, and we're talking about the resurrection, you know, there's a lot of R words that, you know, redeemed and rescued and all these sorts of things, renewed and revived and restored, and we could just go on and on and on and on and on and just have lots and lots of R words that are thematic that help us to focus in on some of God's purpose and plan for us. But then I just felt I just needed to change rushing into back to that, that series and just linger more around Easter. Last Sunday when I was preaching on the resurrection, Carly gave a beautiful testimony, didn't she? She got a great testimony. And, you know, and, and uh, it, was, it was just really powerful just telling her simple story. Just, just the beauty of how God has the power to not only change people in the past, but change people today. And God's there. Jesus promises to be with us on that journey, that transformation. That Sometimes there's something that happens in an instant, but often it's something that just takes time as you spend time walking and talking with Jesus. And I said that last week, I said that it would be silly to dismiss the resurrection and still attend church. You know, it's like, because to me, and I've been in churches where people have come up to me afterwards and had said, you know, well, I'm not quite sure about the resurrection. You know, it, my scientific mind doubts that that could have happened. And therefore, you know, and I'd say, well, hang on a second. Why are you coming to church? If you don't believe in the resurrection, if you don't believe in this Jesus person, ah, oh, well, you know, it's a good way of living and it's, there's some good morals and it's a good community to belong to. And I'm thinking, my goodness, that's sad. That's sad. You know, I just feel as though there would be, there's, there are other things you could do or other things that you would be involved in. If you took away that central element of our faith. Because when we think about Jesus, this risen Jesus, we, we realize that he's not dead, but that he's alive. That death couldn't hold him. As I said, sin couldn't stain him. And he rose victorious from the grave. And because of that, we can unite ourselves to Jesus by faith. So today, we heard Charles read a passage that had a lot of belief in it. There were a lot of believing words in that that he wrote, that he read out. And it was about that first encounter with the disciples. And I'm just putting it in perspective. Remember last week we had the women who had gone to the, 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 uh, the tomb and, and, and found out and, and, and met the resurrected Jesus, or they had seen things and they tried to understand and they were told to go back and to tell the brothers that, that, that he's alive. And so they run back with this message. They're the first believers that he is alive. They go back. You know, as someone told me recently, you know, the first people that were believers in the Bible, the first people in the church were the women who met Jesus, who went to the tomb. You know, they were the ones that took that spark of belief and, and, and took it to the, to the disciples who, who then were, had to deal with this. Can this be true? Is this logical? How do I wrestle with this? You know, and different versions of the Bible say different things. And, you know, they run back to the tomb and they find the tomb is empty and they try to figure out is what's happened here. And in the meantime... The Jewish officials and the Romans try to cover it up, try to say it was his disciples that overpowered the, the Roman guards and pushed the stone away and stole his body. You know, to propagate that story that, that he, that, 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 but you know, they've never found the body. You know, there was no body. But Jesus was alive, but his disciples were trying to figure out how can this be? You know, I don't understand. And so they gather together in this room and the door is locked. 
The door is locked. And it says it's locked because they're afraid of the Jewish officials. They're still afraid that if they go out into the open, that these Jewish officials who now have been emboldened by their victory over Jesus will take them prisoner as well, throw them into jail and do whatever to them because they were the closest followers of Jesus. And so they're in, living in fear. And so they're dealing with their fear, calling a meeting together, out of coming out of all of their hiding places at this room, trying to talk about it. You know, the women are saying, but we saw Jesus and Peter and John are saying, and the tomb was empty, and they're trying to sort of figure it all out, and they're having this conversation. And all of a sudden, there was Jesus. How did he get there? The door was locked. You know, Jesus' resurrected body was not like his physical body in that sense, but he was still able, he wasn't a ghost, he was able to eat food and other accounts and whatever. You know, there was a sense of, he was just different. And yet he was able to be there in the room and suddenly he appears and the, the, the people in the room look and they're going, oh! you know, they're anxious, they're afraid, and then they see something unexpected and it's this shock of that. And so the first thing that Jesus says is, Peace. Peace. You know, he was speaking peace into their life to calm their anxieties, to deal with their fears. He was speaking peace. And it's not just a, just a simple sort of word. I mean, in Israel today, people would say the word shalom, which means peace. As a, as a greeting, but also as a, a way of saying goodbye. I, I have never been to Israel, but I, re, I understand that's correct. You can say peace as a greeting, like hello, and as a goodbye. You know, shalom, shalom, you're saying goodbye. But, but it's, it's more a blessing on that person. It's more saying to that person, you know, that, that um, may you be full of well-being or may health and prosperity be on you. May you be full of God's blessing on you. So there is this sense of greeting someone with a blessing. Peace, God's blessing be on you. Shalom. And it quietens the disciples and Jesus was able to show them his side and his hands and his feet and showed them he was real. And in seeing, they believed. In seeing, they believed. And it says that, that this is John's Gospel's version of the coming, the, the coming of the Holy Spirit because then he said he breathed on them. The Holy Spirit, he filled them with the Holy Spirit for the task that that was going to happen. He, he empowered them with the Spirit of God. He dealt with their anxieties. He dealt with their fears, things that were locked away. And then he breathed the Holy Spirit into them. But later on, when they told poor old Thomas that he who wasn't there, I don't know why he wasn't there, you know, maybe he was doubting the story. I don't know. We have, we have to read a lot into that. But poor old Thomas, he said, I won't believe unless I see it myself. You guys saw it. I didn't see it. I need to see his, the, that, the hole in his side and the hole in his hands. I won't believe unless I see it. And so it says a week later, Jesus met them in that same space. And again, the first thing he says to them is peace. Peace. And then he looks to Thomas and he shows him his side and he shows him his hands and he said, Thomas, stop doubting. Believe. And I always say that, you know, Thomas goes from zero to hero in a moment because Immediately he puts it together and he looks to Jesus and says, My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. It's the first time in John's Gospel when anybody had put that together. So Thomas, it goes from a person whose cat was called Doubting Thomas to someone who, who believes and identifies Jesus for who he actually is. 
You know, and good old Thomas, history says that he went off to India and places like that and spread the gospel for the rest of his, his life with the, with the power and the passion of knowing Jesus. But Jesus had to deal with his insecurities. He had to deal with his doubts. He had to deal with his fears. And so what I want to say today is that many of us are like those disciples who are in that room with that door locked. You know, we're there with our anxious thoughts. We're there with our worries and our concerns. We're there with our pain, our hurts. And sometimes we're there with our secret sins, things that are locked away, things that are not public. And in, 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 in many ways, we don't want other people to see these. We're trying to keep ourselves safe or protected by putting some walls up around us. And I feel as though the message that's coming through today is a reminder that Jesus is not bound by those walls. He can be in that space with us. And what he offers us is shalom. He offers us peace. He offers us blessing. He offers us forgiveness. He offers us hope. He invites us to be resurrected with him, to die to those things, to, to, to leave them behind so that we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. So, friends, I just want to just, just, just get us to think about that. Just linger with this story and realize that, that there is power in that space where we, we, we believe and yet we still struggle with our beliefs, where we, we are friends of Jesus, yet there are things in our life that we've held away that we've kept to ourselves because of our pain, because of our sin, because of our, the circumstances that have, might have been out of our control, whatever it might be, we find those spaces that we lock away. You know, in Revelation, it, Jesus is described as saying, you know, to the church, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you open the door, I'll come in. You know, and I'll, I'll have a meal with you. I'll, I'll, be, I'll restore you. I'll give you hope. So God is not forcing himself upon us. You know, and Jesus appearing in that space, he had to show his disciples that he was real. But he said, Blessed are those who come after you who believe without seeing. And God wants to... Give us that blessing. God wants to heal us and to set us free. But we need to be willing to be in that space, to open that space up and allow God to bring that hope and that resurrection power. So I'd like to invite the musicians to come back up now. And as we, uh, about, as we close, I'd just like to uh, just, ask, just get you to consider and reflect upon this story and upon Jesus' willingness to heal and to give hope and the importance of the cross and the resurrection. So let's pray. Lord, we ask that as we would reflect upon this today, that your spirit would speak into those locked rooms in our lives, that you would step into those spaces that you would point out who you really are, that you would give us hope and healing, that you would provide forgiveness and grace. Lord, we need you. Lord, help us to open these spaces now to you and allow your spirit to come in. And we invite you in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand now as we finish off by singing the song Calvary.
to love and to serve the Lord. Let's go in the victory that Christ has won for us. Let's go in faith. Let's believe. Amen. Amen. I invite you to join us for morning tea.